uh, today we are uh, having with us dr uttam paul uh, for delivering a session on recent advances on future trends in optical techniques and for this particular session is again targeted towards oral diagnosis oral cancer diagnosis thank you so much dr uttam for joining us this evening despite being a festival weekend and i'll just uh, give out a brief uh, introduction about our esteemed speaker dr uttam paul is assistant professor in biomedical engineering stream department of sciences and humanities triple it dm kanchi puram chennai dr uttam obtained his phd from department of electronic systems engineering iisc bangalore in 2021 congratulations it's very recent where he worked on the design and development of novel multimodal cancer diagnosis systems using optical thermal and acoustic modalities his mtech is from electrical department iit bombay in 2013 where he specialized on computational electromagnetics uh, dr uttam has more than 8 years of industrial experience which is like a great credit from industry to academia is a great transition and his research interest lies in developing novel optical tools for intraoperative cancer margin assessment as well as diagnosis of diseases in early stages including breast and oral cancer thank you so much dr uttam for uh, accepting our request and without further delay i hand over the session to you for delivering the talk thank you thank thanks a lot for the wonderful introduction and uh, we have been uh, collaborating with uh, kairos kinetic uh, and uh, dr uh, shri as well as uh, dr kanan is a nice collaboration with them so the work that we have done with this oral cancer also involves a lot of uh, collaboration with dr shri and dr kanan so uh, to begin uh, the the uh, the talk uh, i will just uh, talk about uh, this introduce my institute so triple it dm uh, kanjipuram stands for indian institute of information technology design and manufacturing uh, it's a institute of national importance and uh, it was uh, developed by mhrd uh, in 2007 it was earlier a part of iit madras in 2007 and then it shifted to a permanent campus uh, uh, around uh, 2011 uh, and it's around 25 kilometers from uh, chennai airport uh, so leap lab is actually developed within uh, triple atm kanchipuram so we work uh, using light uh, how we can use the light to uh, actually perform some clinical diagnosis so we work on breast cancer diagnosis we work on oral cancer diagnosis and uh, kind of uh, we plan to work on with cervical cancer diagnosis so uh, the heart of the work that we are doing is uh, with clinical diagnosis so when you talk about uh, the <coughs> the uh, how the light actually uh, interacts with the with the tissue so you can see that uh, the white light when it is shining on the uh, on uh, my hand you can see it's kind of uh, the color of the uh, of my hand is kind of brown over here it's kind of a white color so there are multiple processes that happens once the light interacts with the hand so actually the tissue is a kind of a turbid media so once you shine a light of within this tissue it can actually either uh, get absorbed in the tissue or it can actually uh, scatter uh, within this uh, tissue so uh, why it actually gets absorbed or it actually gets uh, scattered uh so it has many uh, tissue constituents such as it has the cells it has water molecules it has lipids it has collagen fibers it has hemo hemoglobin and there are a lot other like uh, melanin beta carotene cytochrome c and cytochrome c oxidase so all are all of this uh, constituent actually come together within this uh, tissue and uh, uh, and actually results into the uh, absorption uh, as well as uh, scattering coefficient now when you shine a light uh, light can be represented in a wave number uh, wavelength so for example uh, the green light uh, the wavelength of the green light is around 549 uh, 545 nanometers the wavelength of the red light is around 630 nanometers the uh, wavelength of the blue light is around 450 nanometers so all the wavelengths uh, are associated um, all the light are associated with a particular wavelength so this absorption coefficient or like that is a property of the tissue is not constant for uh, throughout the complete wavelength from around 200 to 1000 nanometers which is kind of a, uh, in the visible range so it actually varies and it actually varies for different different uh, 
uh, uh, constituents of the tissue. For example, you can see over here, you have the oxygenated and this is the deoxygenated hemoglobin. So the absorption coefficient actually varies uh, as a function of the wavelength. You can see the lipid as well as uh, uh, water, which are, uh, are also a part of the tissue. So it actually varies, uh, the absorption coefficient actually varies with the rise in the uh, wavelength. Uh, not only the absorption, but the scattering. So you can see this is the scattering. So the scattering, how much it is being scattered also varies with uh, the, the difference in the wavelength. So uh, what, what I will do, I will just uh, give me a second. I will just close my window. There's a lot of noise coming. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, sorry for the disturbance. So, uh, so uh, what I'm going to talk now is like, what are the tissue constituents in the oral cavity that uh, are important to us? Okay. So, as you can see that uh, this is the intraoral cavity, and uh, we try to understand what are the tissue constituents that are important to us. So, these are the four or five tissue constituents that are already available. Uh, but what we kind of focus on is uh, on the uh, hemoglobin. So hemoglobin are the uh, uh, are the uh, constituent uh, which actually carry the oxygen. So either the hemoglobin is carrying oxygen or it is not carrying an oxygen. If it is carrying an oxygen, then it is called as oxygenated hemoglobin. If it is not carrying oxygen, that is known as deoxygenated hemoglobin. Now uh, our main purpose is to actually diagnose whether the uh, or we, we need to find the um, area where the cancer is present and the uh, uh, normal uh, regions. Okay, so uh, what we have seen is that uh, the hemoglobin can also be uh, used as a cancer biomarker. So what we have seen is that uh, within the malignant tissues, uh, the heme synthesis actually reduces, and that is because of the reduction in the activity of the ferrocellulate enzyme, uh, which redu hence reduces the hemoglobin production. So if we are able to track how much the hemoglobin uh, has reduced in different different regions, then we can get an idea of where the uh, tissue is cancerous or where the tissue is kind of uh, normal. So now if you just focus on these areas, uh, you can see that these are the two isobastic points. Isobastic points means uh, the absorption is almost kind of uh, similar. Okay, so we choose around these two points uh, over here and the complete uh, absorption spectra that you see over here, the pink dots are kind of uh, telling that those dots are the isobastic point. Isobastic point means uh, the absorption coefficient of both oxygenated and deoxygenated are the same. So uh, what people have come up with is uh, optical fiber based technique uh, where they are probing uh, the tissue uh, to understand whether the uh, tissue is normal or cancer. So this is uh, the techniques that uh, they, they, they use the optical fiber over here and they, they have the source uh, and then the second or the adjacent to this source is a uh, detector. So you can see this is the source which is shining a light. It interacts with the tissue and as we discussed earlier, it undergoes absorption and scattering. And because of the backscattering, that is you shine a light and then it kind of backscatters uh, in the opposite direction. Uh, you can see that you can actually uh, uh, you can actually uh, quantify the light in uh, the reverse direction. Uh, so this is it starts with a kind of a single source and a single detector. You can actually replicate it with a multiple uh, uh, pick of fibers. That is a multiple de detection fibers and the source in the um, in the center. And uh, this probe actually can be inserted within the oral uh, cavity. Okay, and then you can just move around on different different areas or where you uh, where the clinician actually inspects uh, that there there could be a chance of a lesion. So we, we try to focus on those uh, areas. So there were few uh, few reasons that was uh, discussed in uh, Jayanti at all. So this uh, 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 paper uh, in the work was done in India. And they, they, they saw the region specifically uh, for multiple patients, like hundreds of patients within the buccal mucosa region. Uh, you have the uh, floor of the mouth and then the ventral side of the tongue. So uh, what they saw is that uh, this is the peak that they, this kind of spectrum that they got. So so uh, this, this, this spectrum is nothing but the light that you capture through this detector. 
so as i said light is kind of a broadband so it's not just a single nanometer uh, single wavelength but it's kind of a huge spectrum of light source that you actually capture so it's captured from 400 to around 750 nanometers and you have kind of spectrum that you see uh, of, of the light that you capture so what the what was seen is that there were significant peaks at uh 545 and 575 nanometers that we discussed some time back and for all the regions you can see over here significant peaks uh and those peaks only came for normal areas so for example uh these are the normal regions and these are the cancerous regions okay so uh um so if, if you put the probe over here then you get two significant peaks over here if you if you pick it uh, if you put your probe over here then you will not get a kind of a two significant peaks so it signifies that uh, in the normal regions there are more oxygen uh, oxygenated hemoglobin and hence you actually see those significant peaks uh, while in the case of cancerous uh, tissues there are low number of hemoglobin and that's why you don't see those uh, two peaks the second thing that you see is that the intensity of the uh, diffuse reflectors that is the light which is getting scattered and uh, detected by this uh, uh, probe over here is kind of significantly lower as compared to the normal tissue so the light that you capture with cancerous region will be low now why it is low because a cancerous tissue has undergone to many uh, uh, th 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 there is a, a lot of collagen content within the uh, cancerous tissue so those things results into the lot of scattering and the loss of photons uh, before it gets captured so uh that is the reason why the absorption uh, or uh, or this uh, reflectance uh, is lower for the malignant tissues so if if you see the complete setup over here uh, is like the spectrometer costs around $4000 the uh, halogen lamp costs around $800 the optical fiber itself costs around $600 so the complete cost comes around $550 $400 so if you convert it into inr it costs around 4 lakhs so this complete setup is like very very costly um so uh, and if you are only interested at 545 and 575 nanometers then why do we actually need to get the whole spectrum so why don't we kind of target to those uh, uh, regions so with the advent of new leds uh, there has been um uh new leds uh, fab fabrications uh, facilities have been improved and with, with that we actually can develop uh, very uh, so we can use a very uh, low uh, beam width uh, and bandwidth L, um, leds such as what you see over here you can see this is the 545 nanometers and 570 nanometers it's kind of very uh, na na narrow uh, uh, bandwidth uh, and you can actually use this to uh, as a light source so this this is what people have already done uh, to start off with uh, so they have used uh, the mobile camera based light source or intra oral probe and then they uh, try to capture white light imaging so in this they have used the uh, white light uh, to shine on this uh, tissue and then capture and this is the auto fluorescence uh, uh, approach where they shine a, a uv light source and then try to capture the light in the green color uh but uh, over here the, the 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 basic challenge that we have is that the bacteria also can cause the auto fluorescence so that could lead into the uh the uh, uh lower accuracy of the measurement of the oral uh, regions and then people have also worked with uh, uh, uh specific uh, wavelengths uh, and white light both together uh over here so but this is kind of more so if you, if you use the white light then we only get Uh, some images like this with which uh, it it depends on the visual inspection so what if we don't only use the white light but we use a, a kind of a multiple light source um, across the uh, of of the probe so uh, this is the latest work uh, last year uh, by subhash uh, et al uh, from saskan meditech they they developed this uh, intraoral probe and and you can see from if you see from here it has around four uh, wavelengths over here and then they take the images uh, of uh, two different uh, uh, wavelengths they take a ratio of these two wavelengths and then they see that uh, uh, the ratio of 610 and over the ratio of 545 is kind of a, having leading to a very high sensitivity and specificity so the the, the so this is a, a nice uh, kind of a interval a probe which can be used to diagnose uh, cancer and normal tissue uh, cancerous uh, oral cancer di diagnosis with a very high 
sensitivity and specificity. But the the challenge that it faces that is kind of very costly. It costs around seven lakhs, and uh, and uh, there's very really little information on the constituents. Uh, like what about the other like lipid and collagen? Can we talk about those uh, if that is possible? So uh, what do we we actually did uh, is that we wanted to understand uh, uh, if we can actually reduce the price of from seven lakhs to around uh, in order of some kind of thousands of uh, rupees. So there, there is a lot of optics involved over here. So you, you actually requires the, uh, you, you actually require the light to be emitting in the center. So it requires a lot of lenses to focus in the center. So, so we, what we try to do is that instead of using the lenses, can we make the the uh, the peripheral uh, surface to be having some kind of inclination? So we perform kind of a simulation with which we can understand uh, whether the uh, 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 whether the region is cancerous or not. So so we try kind of 3D printed that design, and uh, so this is the uh, simulation result. So we used COMSO multiphysics. Um, uh, to launch around 300,000 rays and uh, it, it, it in interacted with this tissue area and uh, and it, it caused a kind of a, a image like this one. So this is for a single wavelength of light. And we saw that as we in increase the angle of inclination, as you see, uh, if we increase the angle of inclination, so at around 20 degrees, it's actually uh, nicely comes into the region of interest. So the region of interest is the dashed uh, outer black lines, uh, black circles that you see over here. So this is the region of interest. And as you go on increasing the angle of inclination, it actually goes out of this region. Okay. So this is a graph that we uh, got and uh, we, we, for different, different angle of, uh, sorry, with different uh, region of interest, we can actually focus on what angle it should be. For example, for if our region of interest is having a diameter of around 10 mm, that is the central uh, uh, circle over here, then the region of interest, uh, then the angle, best angle would be around 42.5. Uh, as you can see over here, somewhere in between of these two. But if your region of interest is a little bit more, around 20 mm, then 30 degrees would be a, a good angle of inclination. And if your region of interest is like the outer circle over here, it is around 30 mm, then your region of, uh, the angle of inclination can be around 20. So uh, we try to do a trade-off between them and around 20, 30 degrees we selected and just try to put it in our mouth and capture some of the images. And this is what we actually got. Uh, so uh, this is the summary of what uh, we are kind of planning to do in the next step. So we try to capture multiple wavelength light source and then take images. And uh, this is kind of a like uh, for cancerous tissue, uh, the ratio of these two will be kind of very high. Uh, uh, by this one would be also very high, but but this one would be kind of low. So this is what we are looking into it, and uh, with this uh, 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 we are trying to make kind of prototype. Uh, and with Dr. Shri and Dr. Kanan, we can actually uh, use this. Uh, so I will just show you uh, the prototype over here. We'll just, uh, I think that's my last slide. Uh, what I will do, I will just stop sharing, and I will just. Uh, share this uh, probe. So this is the probe that we have developed over here. And in, in, in this probe, uh, you can see uh, this can be actually connected to uh, the uh, USB side, it can be connected to the, uh, the computer. And then uh, this uh, is a probe. Uh, I think you can see this probe. And with this probe, it has uh, multiple uh, channels over here. So each channel will be uh, going to an LED. Uh, with different wavelengths, uh, and in the center, uh, it has a camera. So I think you can see in the center is a camera, and uh, that will actually image the area, the uh, internal cavity. So you can go inside the mouth, and you kind of take images.